Hello everyone, I'm Annie Gibbons and you're listening to Memoirs of Successful Women, the podcast where you get to hear candid conversations with fascinating women from around the globe who share aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure their success and what they have learnt along the way. Hello and welcome to Memoirs of Successful Women. Today I'm introducing you to Pooja Bhatia, who is going to be talking about leveraging intellectual property rights, a topic that we women in business might not have thought too much about before, but she's going to come as an expert in the field and talk about why it actually is such an important topic to be aware of and therefore act on. Pooja is also one of the authors in my upcoming book, A Woman's Guide to Business Domination. She's going to be writing a chapter on leveraging intellectual property rights. Welcome to the program, Pooja. Thank you so much, Annie, for having me here. Good morning to everybody. I hope good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time zone anyone is in. So, <laughs> no, yeah, in all time zones because we go live and uh, we, we just reach people where they are, which is the great thing. We all know women are just busy doing their business and life around the globe, listening into this podcast. So let's talk about uh, your background. First of all, I know, Pooja, you have an MBA in technology management. You're a certified licensing professional, registered technology transfer pe- professional. I know you also are a registered patent agent agent in uh, the Indian Patent Office. So where does that background uh, position you in the global world of women being able to help those in business truly understand what um, they should be considering regarding uh, intellectual property? Um, Annie, you know, uh, besides the all other qualifications that you have mentioned, there's another factor which helps me in connecting with women globally. One is that I have traveled, I have seen different cultures. I was born in Nigeria. I've been brought up in India and right now I'm in US. So I've seen three different places and more than that. And, you know, a bit of the culture helps you in connecting with people. Mm -hmm. So once you connect with people, simplifying intellectual property rights is still easier because unless and until you connect, uh, nobody's going to listen to you. (laughs) That is true. We often think that, you know, because you're in a different part of the world, I'll often get that, you know, even as a business coach for women, because I come from Australia, they'll go, will you relate to me in my area of the world? Because you're always thinking, well, don't you have different, you know, legal requirements, way things are. So definitely when you're a woman on the global stage, you you know, definitely if you've traveled or lived in those places or that you're acutely aware of those global differences, super important, right? Definitely it is. Um, Even though IP across the globe, each country has its own legal aspect connected to it. Like Mm -hmm. they they are differing in terms of scope, uh, how they are prosecuted, what kind of rights you get, even in the terminology. So I'll just give you a very small example. Like Australia has innovative patents, which are also called as petty patents, (laughs) but they are nowhere else in the world. So Australia and the few other countries that have it, but US doesn't have it yet. Uh, There was a move that they would get it, you know, the utility models implemented, but it's a challenging thing. Even Australia is now thinking of removing them. So so with time, there are a number of changes that happen in the legal space, especially with regards to the IP and one needs to be updated. So even if I'm staying in India or I'm a registered patent agent, with the Indian Patent Office, I still need to keep myself abreast of what is happening across the globe to be in a position to connect with people, to explain and help and simplify the entire process. Hmm. Absolutely, because it's such a confusing process, particularly um, if you haven't entered that space before. I know a lot of people, you know, the people I'm coaching, they're all focused on getting their business functioning, getting that revenue in, talking about their branding and their websites and that material, that intellectual material that you are producing, whether it's a, a product or a service, often you think, well, can I protect it? Aren't there millions of people around the world doing a similar version? How do I know, you know, what's just uniquely mine what can I protect what is the process how do you unpack that for people you know from from a global perspective what that what should they be aware of and what should they be considering uh, for their business 
and you, most of the people don't know that you know the ip starts the moment you have started a startup hmm. the name of your startup is also a form of an ip and you have to be careful when you are choosing the name because not only it has to be unique different catchy but it also doesn't need to infringe on anybody's right it has to be something which is safe you don't land into problem later on you don't have to change the brand name so it's very critical when you are starting off with any form of ip uh, especially with the trademarks to run a search through a professional they could run a search through the different databases which are there and see if anything is registered or anything similar is there same goes for the other forms of ip as well uh, unfortunately for many forms especially for the patents even though the patent is granted in a particular country the novelty would be judged globally so, mm -hmm. so you need to screen every document which is there across the globe to be sure that you are not not destroying your own novelty and you still have an inventor step wow that is such a key listening list, uh, learning um opportunity for those listening in if you're like me ladies i haven't thought of that i often think okay well i've i've looked in in my country or those that i'm operating in but i haven't actually thought gee do you, are you actually saying you should go out to a legal professional such as yourself because you're going to be able to do that global search you could be confident in your space but somewhere in the world someone has trademarked that idea or concept is that what you're saying Yes, because what happens is that you can do the you can run the searches on your own, but then the professionals are trained in this way. They know how to dig out the information and look at the different sources. You could you you know miss out something which would impact you later on. So that is where a professional generally comes in. But if you are trying to save in cost, um, you can definitely do the search yourself. But it's not going to be you know that you are going to just put in. Uh, a search word in a particular database and you're going to get the entire information you'll have to search across the different databases to get the information <laughs> so if, if you are willing to invest with that much of time that's good enough yeah but it's, definitely it's, do the search it's one of those everything you can do yourself but it's always better with a professional i think you're saying uh so let's give the listeners some ideas of what sort of things i know you you would trademark or or, or protect in this way i know that you help innovators and organizations transform their ideas to be able to prevent them from you know getting lost or getting um infringing on things but what sort of things would someone in business even if you're right at the beginning of your business thinking i need to check or protect protect before I actually start growing and scaling? So uh, trademark is one of the examples that I could give, you know, which are easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Like now, uh, Instacart and Instagram. So the moment Instagram became very famous, they had trademarked it. Mm -hmm. And then people started coming up with different combinations, but they had blocked them. Then came up Instacart. So in that case, it is nothing but it's in a different category. So it was allowed uh, by the trademark office to file it. But now if you look at it, <laughs> it is still uh, piggy banking uh, on somebody else's reputation. Yes. So if you are trying to you know, copy somebody else's logo or trademark or even their tagline, you need to be very careful. If it's a bigger fish than you, <laughs> they'll definitely come after you. So... And secondly, even the investors nowadays, they are quite savvy. They know what is IP. They would ask you if you are infringing at any point, say in terms of the technology you are using, the products that you are selling, the, you know, the uh, taglines you are using, or even your own logo, because mm -hmm. they want to be quite safe. They don't want to land up into any issues. So these are the kind of things I generally bring up, especially for the enterprises, because when you're starting out, I know, you would be focusing on so many things and these are small things that might skip your mind but later on it will create an issue so it's better to you know be aware of it right from the beginning oh absolutely absolutely i hate it when you've been doing something for ages and then someone says oh no you can't actually do that you know that's not legal or something you go oh. like what you said there even a tagline so i'm imagining if i'm thinking of nike or something if there's if their tagline was just do it i don't know what it is at the moment but that's that's one that leaps out at me <laughs> um would they have trademarked that that tagline so if someone else 
for example, used that um, that phrase, just do it, could they actually come to you and say, you need to remove that wording from all of your website and, and marketing material? Is that how it works? Yes, it does. So uh, even if it's not trademark, they have a well-known reputation over it because it's a tagline which is commonly used. Yes. So they would definitely you know, stop you from using it because it's affecting their brand value. Even if it's not protected, they would still stop you from using it. So uh, whatever taglines we are using, uh, you know, when I was taking care of a particular company, I always used to tell them that, you know, you have to screen it. Whatever you are writing, is it there anywhere? If anybody else has used that tagline, please don't use it. Try to be creative, try to be different, use different languages. But be sure that whatever you're doing is not already there and you're not infringing anybody's rights. That is very, very important. So important and so hard sometimes because I know, you know, in my coaching program, sometimes it's just trying to work out what the name of the business is going to be. And we check domains and what domains are available and, and things of that nature. And it's amazing how many are actually already taken. So it's very difficult to sometimes <laughs> go, I want to be creative and edgy. I want to be really unique. And then every time you search for something, it's already gone. Uh, so it is, yeah, it is hard. And definitely knowing the difference between, you know, those ones who are already gone I'll, I'll give in a scenario for you then what if someone has a big brand but they haven't actually um, protected it legally and then someone else who just starts calls themselves that brand they've got the website in a, a different um, you know in australia.au instead of .com uh, and and they trade theirs can the smaller organization startup then tell the bigger organization to actually not use their, their brand? Does it work in the reverse is what I'm saying? Uh, no, because the, <laughs> the larger company will have a stronger team of lawyers. So you should be prepared to, you know, go for that battle. And you need to have a strong team at your end and maybe a strong uh, evidence to prove that you actually have a brand reputation created around that, you know, product or that service or even the trademark or, whatever you're using okay. so that is a challenge sometimes yeah it makes it more complicated then doesn't it because I, I, my scenario was the person hadn't trademarked it but because they're a bigger company they could they're obviously got more money to back it up uh but they'll also say you know they'll they could still win even though they hadn't protected it they definitely would after a legal experience but um that is a fascinating one to know but yeah. generally, most of the startups would, you know, give, they won't fight at that moment because they would believe that, you know, it's better to use the resources somewhere else rather than putting it in the legal battle. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Which is why I think it's so important to be having this conversation with you. And I'll be including it in my incubator programs for this very reason that, you know, this I know after coaching for years is an area that someone usually will put as a very, very last minute sort of thing. Do you think I need it? Because they're automatically. Um, thinking cost right and so you want to do things that give you the immediate big win it's fun it's exciting but uh, I'd love you to now talk about you know from a risk perspective what dollars are we talking about if someone doesn't go and um, take this seriously and and protect their uh, brand what sort of fines um, actually have you seen come through to different companies so uh, I don't think so if you have a unique brand yourself and you're not copying anybody then there won't be any fine for you mm -hmm. but the the only risk that you have is that losing out that opportunity of protecting it and creating a portfolio or you know a, a, or an asset for yourself because later on when you plan to do it it might be too late to do it mm. Mm, so, I so it's better to create an asset as soon as possible so like you said about the domain name Right. If, you, if you're still working on it and you don't have a website or maybe uh, you are using a, some other website, not, not with that particular domain name. And then later on, you want to have that domain name and it's gone. Yes. So, then, so, so what, what are you going to do about it? So, yes, domain names nowadays are a big, are big challenge. But if you look at the overall uh, risk to the company is in terms of changing the name when you have already built up everything. Yeah, so that, yeah. that is the biggest risk, I would say. Um, 
fine wise um, most of the larger companies also will wait till you become or reach that level to interest them because they will also use their resources very carefully to see where is it what kind of market are you capturing how much are you penetrating that market to to reach out to you to stop you from doing it yes i can understand oh my goodness this is so important you um you've told me before that you work on innovation management and technology transfer what does yes. that actually mean so when you are innovating the entire innovation has a life cycle it has a has a term uh, as an it has a life cycle connected with innovating creating something developing it further scaling it up but mm -hmm. at each step you need to ensure that whatever innovations you have these are either protected mm -hmm. uh, you know in whichever jurisdiction you want but again all these geographies would cost you so you need to do a bit of a balancing between which markets you are going to enter and which markets you would like to you know forego and then decide about the costing part so this this entire cycle of getting your ips uh, innovations ready protecting them through different forms of ip and then helping it to scale it up now once you reach to the scale of further to the level of further development and scale up there again you need to be cautious that whatever innovations you are sharing with people are something that are well protected yeah they are not kind of leaked out so so the, this this entire process of helping the innovators and connecting with people helping them in protecting their ip is something that we call as innovation management mm -hmm. uh, with innovation management when you are protecting there are number of deadlines to be met especially with filing the patents you have to pay the nut or the maintenance fee the there's an annual fee related to maintaining the patents mm -hmm. then you also have some deadlines with submitting documents uh, like in india you have to compulsory uh, submit a form that illustrates that the invention is being commercialized hmm. so there are a number of deadlines and processes to be completed so that is also part of the innovation management now once you have an innovation most of these startups they 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 continue on it they it's you know either part of their main portfolio or they are already working on it and they are interested in it but sometimes they have some things which are lying on their shelves maybe some you know technology half built uh -huh. which they don't want now because the this the scope and the ideas or maybe the direction of the company has changed so uh -huh. now they want they have something which is unwanted so that could be transferred to other companies so that their shelf is cleared and it is ready to have more innovations and instead of focusing and investing too much money and energy into the ones that you don't want to pursue further you can give it out to some other company and create a source of revenue for yourself so that is technology transfer because you are transferring it to one party to the other right okay so you basically create something or have the concept or the <clears throat> have done the early work of something that you've decided after a period of time you're not going to progress any further but it's then saleable to someone else in the market right yes yes so like during the pandemic a lot of startups had you know created products to resolve the problem like they came up with mask with sanitizers and mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff but that was not part of their main portfolio like that that was not something which they were mainly working on yes. so that was kind of you know just lying on their shelf they have created they don't want to invest much because the investors are not quite happy then mm -hmm. why are working on something else so uh, we did help one or two startups in uh, transferring it to other startups who were keen on taking it up so yeah. that way yeah. we could help two different companies in getting the technologies they were interested in and clearing the shelf of others so that they could work on new something new yeah <laughs> it's a real win win thing. isn't it because i know a lot of companies that the pandemic's a great example for that that if you're slightly in that field or even just opportunistic and you say okay well we're going there's there's a gap in the market that i'm going to suddenly sell yeah a lot of sanitizer or a stand that goes at the, in the front of the store that's going to you know hold the sanitizer or whatever it is because you're in a business that just says you know i'm going to be quiet at this space so i can pick something up so it's kind of like something you're saying that's got a short short shelf life for you 
but if that's someone else's main business, it's it's something that you would then be able to uh, transfer over or as a point of sale uh, to them, which is very smart, actually, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Your opportunity, that was once your opportunity becomes someone else's opportunity. So, you know, it's kind of spreading more positivity in the world. I would say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what is the difference then for a patent? People who haven't ever, you know, patented anything, what, what is the process for that? And why is that so important? I know it's to protect your idea, but what does it involve? So there are different, uh, let me explain it by giving you an example that, you know, there are different forms of IP and people generally get confused between one form and the other. Mm -hmm. So the four most common, which are useful for a startup are design, mm -hmm. trademark, patents, and copyright. So each of these protect different aspects. So copyright is generally for the form of expression, the way your podcast are, you know, planned and uh, produced so that is your copyright the way you speak is your copyright uh, more related to the technology software is something that is also protected under copyright in most of the countries then you have trademarks trademarks is very simple it could be for logos for train uh, for names of the trades or services or you know just taglines uh, in some countries there even the perfumes and smells are protected as trademark wow okay <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> then we have designs that just kind of you know protects the um, look and feel of a product how the product looks aesthetically um, that is protected under design and then you and lastly have patents which protects the technology aspect so it could be either a product or a process leading to a product or a combination of both product and a process so but uh, with patents you have to be very careful because they have a stringent uh, requirement for granting it mm -hmm. and there are three criteria that need to be cleared and which are their prevalent standard criteria across the globe which is novelty inventive step and uh, having some kind of industrial application so the third one is quite simple and easy to you know uh, reach to because you will definitely have some industrial application. But the most difficult part is ensuring that you have novelty and inventive step. And that is where a detailed search is going to help you in mm -hmm. identifying the novelty. Mm -hmm. And then once you have identified that, even if you have an idea, it's very prudent to at least do a search to see that you are not reinventing the wheel. Because if it's already out there, it's protected, in any case, you are not going to get much of the protection. You won't get a granted patent even if you file for it. Hmm. So by just filing an application, you will not get a patent. It has to undergo a certain process, which is called as examination. Uh, and it's examined by the respective patent offices. But uh, the first step is the filing part. And that takes a bit of long time because you have to search and ensure it's not already there out there in the market or anywhere in the globe. And then you have to draft the application, which needs to take care of quite a number of things. So mm -hmm. one of them is that you ensure that whatever you are disclosing uh, is there, is meeting what you actually have. You are not putting in something which you plan to do in future, because then you're giving it out. It, that would be published. Yes. Uh, the other thing is <laughs> you, you have to have um, a proper bomb boundary uh, to lay the protection. So those are called as claims. If you don't have proper drafted claims, then you might end up uh, losing up the IP. Even you, you have a patent, but it's useless because it's not protecting what it actually should. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I hope you're not all listening in, getting overwhelmed here. All I'm hearing is there's a whole area of expertise that Pooja has and she's, she knows it really clearly, but it's so easy to actually just tread a little, um, little landmine there of, of not just not being aware. I think a lot of this is awareness and then knowing how to how to respond or just investing when you can with someone, someone with expertise who can actually show you um, what you should be um, focusing on. One thing I'd love to ask about, because it's a challenge I know, um, with pitching okay so I'm uh, I work with a lot of startups and scale-ups and obviously you want to go and practice you can go to startup hubs and you can pitch your business because you're looking for venture capitalists you're looking for those angel investors but then as you pitch you're also got to have enough 
of your information given out while you need their money to then be able to grow your business. So it's a risk, isn't it? <laughs> and so how do you get around that legally um, with, you know, by, by saying enough, but um, can you, can you, is that, about, is that what you were saying before that right from the beginning, even the concept of what you're doing, you should be trademarking it right then? Because I know that people sometimes go, I held back on my pitch because I don't, because I know people in the room could steal my ideas. And, uh, and that's a really hard place because I'm one of those, you want to be all in kind of people, don't hold anything back on the table, right? Um, and so I'd love to hear your perspective on that. That is actually a challenge because you need the money so you need to prove that you, you, you have something unique right? exactly. and to prove that you have something unique you need to lay down everything on the table hmm. uh, so usually what we do is that uh, we advise the startups to go ahead and protect at least a provisional patent so in india uh, filing a provisional patent which is not complete uh, you, you don't still have the details and it's faster to file because the claim drafting part is what takes maximum of the time. Mm -hmm. So in provisional, you don't have claims. You could or you could not have claims to simplify your life. Just remove the claims at the moment and then file a provisional. So you have at least some kind of a protection mm -hmm. even before you are going and discussing with people. So that helps you. Nowadays, if you ask anybody to sign an NDA, they would not really appreciate it because they would protect, presume that you have some level of protection before you are coming and speaking to them. Yes, yes. So, okay. so that is definitely a risk, but then you, you have to be smart enough to uh, take certain steps. So even when you are, any, any startup is, you know, pitching or discussing, there could be some part which is absolutely novel and which they are, very serious about and they don't want to disclose they could just skip that portion mm -hmm. because even when you are pitching the investors would not be interested in you know the complete technology they would like to know the features and everything but not exactly how it is going to work so that is something that you could you know keep it with you and not discuss too much about it mm -hmm. at least for the first round mm -hmm. Very good advice. It's a tricky one. I'll, I'll, of course, use this opportunity to speak to the expert because as I'm coaching people, that's something that I'm totally not sure of. And I always go, go all in. And then they're going, but someone might steal my idea. Another question that often comes up is copyright. So you've got your material out, your marketing material, you know, and the, there's so much on the internet that you can use ideas or bits and pieces. And so what's the fine line between how much of another person's words can you sort of rework to not be copyright? And also the next question is when you put something out, does it make a difference if you just put a little C copyright sort of, you know, icon on it? Does that make it copyright or not? You know, I'd love clarity around that whole piece. Uh, I, I'll answer the second question first. So copyright is one of those rights that, you know, you, you don't need to register them. Okay. But if you plan to enforce it, then you need to register. So the moment you have your C in, in the circle and then the ear yes. and with your name or, you know, with the company's name, that is good enough as a copyright. But then you can't go and fight with anybody else if they are copying something from you. So it has to be protected as in it has, you have to file an, an application for the copyright uh, and it has to be granted, registered. Then only you can go in and fight with anybody else for it. Okay, so if you have, um, you're a small business and you've you've got some marketing material out there and you've put your little C copyright 2022 with your business name on it and then you hear that someone else has actually gone and reused your most of your material and put it into theirs, you're saying if you didn't register it, you still can't um, do anything about that? Yes, because it, oh. you can only <laughs> enforce something that you have protected. Yeah. and. What gets protected is something that is original. So, mm -hmm. so again, that is a challenge to prove that, you know, whatever you have is original. But in copyright, what happens is that it is the form of expression that is getting protected, mm -hmm. not, not, the, uh, not the idea. So uh, if you look at the various books, especially the love stories, right? Yes. <laughs> they, they have the same ending, with, whether it's Barbara Cartland, whether it's uh, any other book, you know, 
the, the, the theme is same it's common it's yeah. revolving around love story so in that case uh, even though the theme is same the way they have expressed the way they have written uh, the way the story is flowing is different yes. so that is what is protected yes absolutely fascinating topic i know time is getting away with us this is just so interesting so in your chapter in uh, a woman's guide to business domination what are the key aspects that you're going to be covering and why do you want people to, to read your chapter why is it just going to help them so much in their business so i'm actually uh, a founder in making i am trying to create my own company um, based on offering IP and technology transfer consulting. So while I was working on creating my own startup and you know finding a name, I could relate with the problems a startup or an entrepreneur would face. Hmm. So I am highlighting those points in the chapter as well, sharing the thought process that I have followed, making it simpler for people to see and correlate with it, you know, that, okay, if she has done it this way, Maybe we can also follow the same process and try to come up with a company name or a domain name, which is quite different. And they still get it. Like, you know, you you, you don't have to see that it's already been taken. It could be yes. different enough and you you would still have it. So that is the pro one process that I'm explaining in it. I'm, and I'm also explaining how licensing or technology transfer could be a better route rather than creating something on your own. Mm -hmm. So now... Um, when start when any, anybody is creating a startup they always think that you know the idea has to be unique and it has to be generated by the startup mm -hmm. that is not true you could actually look out for ips or patents which are already there just license them out because most of the academic institutions do have such technologies which are as a, at, at a very nascent stage mm -hmm. you could work on them and bring them to a level with where it is commercializable or it can be marketed mm -hmm. so that way you are at least not investing into the initial part and you can just focus on taking it ahead exactly i, I okay. hope i can i'm making sense <laughs> you are totally making sense and i think a lot of people just don't realize that that there's so many actually different stages of businesses or concepts uh, that you can actually just get pretty much like what we'll call off the shelf someone else has already taken it to that level and then it's saleable so you don't always have to think i have to do everything from from that first scratch right you can you can yeah get what you're wanting to achieve, then you can have a, have a look at what's on the market. You can actually purchase some of those things. An example would be, um, you know, I'm a, a registered training organisation with one of my companies and I, we can actually purchase courses. And then, you know, because you're already a provider, you, you don't have to start and create that course from scratch. For example, once you've got the framework, you can, uh, one, you can buy another RTO, you know, you could do that from scratch, or even if you are one, then you can also buy other courses and programs materials that are already fit for purpose right and so that can actually be a bit of an investment but then you know that they've ticked all those boxes for you so there's many ways to go about business and I I think your chapter is just going to be so informative I know we've got a, at least you know 25 different ladies from around the globe who are going to be sharing their knowledge and expertise on all aspects of business and it's just going to be so cutting edge because they're areas that you know they're so niche you know and that's what I love you know when I'm as a generalist it's it's suddenly you know these areas I'm not sure about you know I don't have confidence so I want to make sure that those that I coach and and are actually reading that book go yes Pooja actually does this she's got the credentials she's had the expertise she lived around the world and actually being able to have that ability to then be able to um, reveal the steps to share that share that learning in a logical way I think that's the secret right there's so many people who know things and make it sound more complicated. But I love the way you're approaching this, this chapter, actually, that it says, you know, well, when I started a business, these are the decisions I have to make. These are the areas that I have to check. Do I, how do I want to protect them? How do I want to ensure um, that you won't come back to bite me, if you like? And uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be so, so powerful. So I thank you so much for sharing with me today. Thank you so much, Annie, for having me. And you know, I am looking forward to the book because it's going to be a nice read even for me to read others' experience. And especially I'm looking forward to your chapters <laughs> and, uh, you know, learn from it. And I'm definitely going to use some of your lines. Uh, I really like the catchy lines you use. <laughs>
I so love about the catchy line. So I'm all about the, yes, lo- lots of fun. So we have got so many different topics coming out in this booklet and I'll be definitely talking about how to dominate in business. That's the whole focus that we want to be market leaders in our niche. So all of the authors are people who are dominating in their specific unique niche. And uh, and that's why, yes, I'll be pulling it all together and I'll hopefully do all the other women proud in my, in my chapters. But I'm like you, Pooja, I actually can't wait to read everyone else's uh, chapters because you know together you just get such a flavor of different experiences the way intelligent and expertise women have approached things and then you've got really unique expertise in specific areas and that's why all of those chapters will have specific topics so thank you so much I know people want to reach out to you how do they find you Pooja they can look up me at uh, LinkedIn and as soon as I have my startup float it i'll definitely share the information and share it with you maybe and you can you know share it further with them but otherwise i'm easily accessible on the linkedin they can look me up just hit my name puja bhatia vasekar and you'll find me on linkedin that's the easiest way to reach out to me <laughs> i love linkedin i absolutely love it because it's just yeah so convenient so easy to find i'll put you all of your contact details on my podcast platform on my youtube channel you will not be difficult to find you're also those of you who are going to get excited about this book coming out in uh it's going to come out in october in time for christmas so start getting excited about that uh and and puja's details will be in there as well plus those of you who are in my study Startup, scale up, or business domination incubator programs. Uh, this recording and bite size information with some activities to then go and do will also be put in my incubator program just to make sure that you really do explore all these aspects thoroughly. Thank you so much, Pooja. It's been an absolutely revealing conversation for me, quite a learning experience. And I'm certainly going to go back and check a few aspects of my business after the conversation we've had today. Sure. And if you need any help, just let me know. I'll try to simplify it more. I'm sorry. Uh, IP is all about legal jargon. So I'll try to simplify as much as I can. (laughs) Absolutely fantastic. Terrific. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Memoirs of Successful Women. You can find me at anniegibbons.com where you can download my free resources get connected on social and check out my online magic transformation program. If you love this show, feel free to subscribe to future episodes and of course, share it with your friends. I'll see you again soon. And until then, happy podcasting.